death that is destroyed. These things happen today. As an example, they have written down as a warning to us. A God who the end of the ages is come. Therefore, whoever the thing is standing, is scared, should, should take care and not be frightened. Be worried. Some people told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with the blood of their sacrifices. Jesus said to them in reply, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, that they were greater sinners than all the other Galileans? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Were those 18 people who were killed when the tower at Siloam fell on them. Do you think they were more guilty than everyone else who lived in Jerusalem? By no means. But I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. And he told them this parable. There once was a person who had a fig tree planted in his orchard. And when he came in search of fruit on it, but found none, he said to the gardener, For three years now I have come in search of fruit on this fig tree, but have found none. So cut it down. Why should it exhaust the soil? The gardener said to him in reply, Sir, leave it for this year also, and I shall cultivate the ground around it and fertilize it. It may bear fruit in the future. If not, you can cut it down. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Every time I was praying with these readings this week, I kept coming back to the image of the gardener. The gardener who we hear about at the end of this Gospel, in this parable of Jesus. He wants to give the fig tree a second chance, or maybe a third chance. Just one more year, just one more year, trust me, I'll take care of it, and it will bear fruit. Just one more year, all I need is just a little more time, and it will bear fruit. And I couldn't help but think about parents. It makes sense. Today's Mother's Day, or tomorrow's Mother's Day, in Lebanon, understandably. But also yesterday was the Feast of St. Joseph. The Feast of St. Joseph, the spouse of Mary, and who with Mary raised Jesus. And so I couldn't help but think about parents as I heard about this gardener, because there are a lot of similarities. Parents have a certain amount of time to take care of their children, to work with their children so that their children will bear fruit when they're off on their own. And there's a certain tenderness there's a certain generosity. I have this time. How much can I give to my child, to this fig tree, to fertilize it, to help it grow strong? 
And then as I looked at the rest of the readings, I noticed that these images of parenting were actually throughout all of them. So I'd like to share two of the images with you. In the first reading and in the psalm, we hear the image of God as a tender and loving parent. First, in the situation of Moses, Moses is taking care of the, the, uh, the animals, sees the burning bush, and as he draws closer to the burning bush, he realizes that it is the voice of God speaking to him. And this voice of God spoke to him and said, I hear your cries. I know you are suffering. I hear you. I'm coming. I'm coming to liberate you from the slavery that you're living in right now. And I thought about all the times that I heard my little brothers crying in their bedrooms. And my mother would drop whatever she's doing to go see. What's going on? Is the baby okay? And then would come back after the baby was back to sleep again. God speaks to Moses with this tenderness. I'm coming. I hear your cries and I'm coming. I am who I am. And I am with you. And then, and as we heard in the psalm, which was beautifully sung, the Lord is kind and merciful. And so that's our first image, a simple but powerful image of God's tender care, like a parent, like a mother, like a father. In the second reading, we hear another image of God as parent, one that especially if you are mothers or fathers here, that you know very well. Yes, a parent is loving and tender, but there are also rules. There's also a role of discipline in that of a parent. Why? Because parents want to teach their children how to become independent, how to be good community members, how to be good citizens, how to be accountable, how to be responsible. And in order to do that, there needs to be, from time to time, some discipline in order to help the child see what road to walk on. God has expectations, like that parent. And we hear that in the second reading from St. Paul, when he talks about the Israelites. The Israelites had been liberated from Egypt after God had heard them, and then came down and liberated them. But then, as we know from the story of the Israelites, the Israelites didn't necessarily live up to the expectations that God had for them. Maybe you remember when they made their own God out of gold, and they were worshipping that God. Come on, guys. That's not what God is asking. And so the Israelites continued and continued and continued in the desert during this time. And when I thought about that time in the desert, I thought about one of the things that my parents would do when we were growing up. We were four boys, so you can imagine that. It was a lively household, for better and for worse. And when something happened, especially between myself and one of my brothers, very simply, very calmly, my mother and my father would say, Garrett, to the back door. And the back door meant that it was a time out. Time out. And for whatever my age was at the time, if I was 12 years old, I would sit at the back door for 12 minutes. If I was 6 years old, I didn't need as much time, I just needed 6 minutes. I remember one time I was 16, and I had a time out. 16 minutes is kind of a long time to sit at the back door. But in any case, during that time at the back door, it was a time to sit down and just think about, okay, what happened? How maybe could I have loved a little bit differently? And what next? How am I going to go ask for forgiveness from my brother who I might have hit or stole something from? It was a time of preparation to prepare that moment of forgiveness afterwards. And what was beautiful is that even though my parents said, Garrett, to the back door in 12 minutes, after those 12 minutes, after I went to my brother and said, I'm sorry, will you forgive me for what I did? It was over. My parents weren't going to say at the end of the day, remember, you had a 12-minute time out today. No. Merciful. Merciful. Just like God. There's no grudge after that forgiveness. Just love. And so these two images of God as a parent in both of our readings today are helpful for us as we continue on this time of Lent, on this journey of Lent, as I said. We're journeying together through it. 
This Lent time is like the year, the extra year that the gardener gave to the fig tree. It's a time for us to fertilize, to get stronger, in order to hopefully bear fruit for the rest of the year. Once Easter comes and we head back into ordinary time, and then again towards the end of the year. But how can we get strengthened in this time of Lent? God listening to us and hearing our cries. God also mercifully disciplining, helping us to find the right way, the most powerful ways to love, leaving behind our sins, if I need to sit at the back door. And this time is a limited time, so we know that it's a special time to focus on these things. And that's our invitation as we continue on through this Lent, to focus on this image of God as loving parent. And not be afraid to cry out to God if we have needs. And to also recognize what are the ways that I'm not loving my brothers and my sisters well, and I can leave those sins behind during these 40 days. And so I'd like to wish again, happy St. Joseph Day to all of the fathers among us. I'd like to wish a happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers among us. But to all of us, I'd like to wish as brothers and sisters, as children of God, our loving Father, our loving Mother, that we might continue this Lenten journey with love and with commitment.
fruits of good works in our life. Aware of our weakness in the past, let us implore God's help for ourselves and for all other human beings as we say, Merciful God, hear us. Savior, who lives and loves forever and ever. Amen. 